Europe showing early signs of recovery after a devastating winter COVID surge. France has announced it'll start easing its lockdown this weekend. The President Emmanuel Macron announced on Tuesday, whilst Germany is working on allowing small groups to celebrate the holidays together. And England is ending its nationwide lockdown next Wednesday. Also reducing the quarantine period for international travellers from 14 days to five days if you so-called test out. You take a test after five days and then if it's negative, you can, uh, you can end your quarantine. It has a rare bit of good news for airlines that count the pandemic's rising costs. IATA, which of course is the industry body, says aviation is set to lose $157 billion this year and next. It's the biggest shock, of course since World War II. Joining me now is KLM's chief executive, Peter Elbers. He's with me uh, from, from Amsterdam. Peter, it is good to see you, sir. I'm, 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 I'm just so sorry we weren't all able to be in Amsterdam for the IATA annual general meeting and summit as we normally would, but the, the event went ahead and, uh, you know, um, you, you're facing formidable challenges trying to rebuild the, uh, the industry. Yeah, sorry not having you here in, in Amsterdam, Richard, and in fact not having the entire aviation industry. And we had today the first virtual AGM uh, taking place, which uh, it just underpins the importance of being together. We did it virtual, but I really hope next year we're going to be live again together. Now, let's listen to what Alan Joyce, uh, leading IATA member, said. Let's listen to what he says about, obviously, we all accept that quarantines are not a good idea, so the future is vaccinations. Listen to Alan, and then we'll talk after. We are looking at changing our terms and conditions to say for international travellers uh, that we will ask people to have a vaccination before they can get on the aircraft. Uh, whether you need that domestically, uh, we'll have to see what happens with COVID-19 in the market. But certainly for international visitors coming out and people leaving the country, we think that's a necessity. How far along are you going to before you require an international vac uh, vaccination before you'll accept passengers on international flights? Well, the fact that we do have some good news in the last two weeks on vaccines is very encouraging for our industry. And, and in fact, we could see it back in some sort of hope and glimpse of hope uh, for the industry going forward. From my view, it's a little premature today to decide precisely who and when we should be vaccinating. I think governments are still deciding what's going to be the exact follow sequence procedures and so on and so forth. But again, have the vaccine in place is going to be a very big step forward for our industry. Is the future essentially either you've had a test or you have a vaccine certificate? And the logistics, really, Peter, is how you, you, you gain the integrity of the system, isn't it? So that the vaccination certificate is lodged somewhere, the tests are lodged, the whole common pass or travel pass issue. How far can we go with this, do you think? Well, it's it's going to take it's going to take some time. I think this 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 COVID-19 uh, pandemic has demonstrated how difficult it is to have a uniformed and a unified and then harmonized set of rules and measures all over the world. And after nine months, in fact, we're still dealing with different rules and different regulations, country by country. So I think even with the vaccines, we will be dealing with some some sort of different rules and regulations. But again, here, what's important is that we restore the confidence of our consumers of the travelers and the combination of vaccination and testing really would help us to move forward. Do we have a level playing field in aviation? When I look now at some airlines like your own and Air France, your, your, your sister company that got uh, billions from your various governments in forms of loans and grants, Lufthansa are the same, um, the state-owned carriers of the Gulf, and then you've got those like Air Canada that will happily tell you they didn't receive a penny from the government, well, unhappily tell you they didn't receive a penny from the government or IAG or British Airways and the like. Have we... Have we got a level playing field for a competitive environment in a post-COVID uh, airline world? Well, obviously, the, the, the COVID situation has completely turned upside down the entire industry and every country is trying to deal in the best possible way with it. I think within Europe, the level playing field is being ensured by the fact that the European Commission has defined a set of rules and a framework in which such support from government by means of loans and guarantees should be matching in. So that framework should eventually guarantee that level playing field. Having said that, we can see 
that a lot of different rules and measures are taken country by country and with that it's sometimes very difficult to compare exactly what's being done where and what's the final impact on that. But then if you see the staggering losses of the industry, it's obvious that the industry needs support to overcome right. this devastating impact of COVID-19. Peter, finally, and um, so Willie Walsh is to be the next head of IATA, assuming it's uh, well, it's been passed and he'll take over in March. Um, well, brave, brave IATA. I mean, w what are you expecting and hoping from Willie Walsh? Well, at, uh, at KLM Royal Dutch Airlines and, and me personally working there for the last 30 years, I've been competing with Willie for the last 30 years and I look forward to co work now together with him in IATA. Um, I mean, more seriously, IATA has done a great job and under the leadership of Alexander de Juniak, a lot of great work has been done in the past few years and, and, and more recently with, with dealing with the COVID-19. I think the task for IATA going forward is even bigger with pushing for further harmonization, making sure that the airline industry will not only survive this but also recover and and reshape in a better way building back better the industry going forward I think I that that's going to be the big task uh, on Willie's shoulders and any IATA Board of Governors will be happy to support him with that not as a competitor but as a compatriot Peter Elbers uh, again apologies we were unable to be with you of course to enjoy your hospitality in Amsterdam but uh, we look forward to that in the future thank you sir